And we're live from Starknet CC with Brian Fu, co-founder of uh, ZK Land, a money market that's L2 powered. How have you been? Very good. Thanks, Sam. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. So at a high level, could you give us an explanation about what is ZK Land and how it stands out from other money markets you we're used to, you know, deal with. On sure, sure. Planet. Happy to. Um, like you, like you uh, uh, clearly pointed out earlier. So we are building a money market protocol on Startnet um, layer two, and um, under the CK Land protocol branding, we actually have two products. So one is called Artemis, which is for DeFi users, retail users, and the other one is Apollo, which is for institutions. And uh, what it is is that we are trying to solve two issues here. One is um, the capital efficiency uh, question for basically cryptocurrency lending. That's one. Two is um, the gradual institution onboarding and how that's going to be amalgamated with the retail uh, users specifically. And um, for us, basically for the um, capital efficiency issues, what we can do is um, basically leveraging on L2, um, the cost of it, the speed of it, to um, do minor of uh, minor refinements and also some ex extensive enhancement on, for example, the gradations on uh, transactions and how we actually break the risk uh, com component into tiny, be uh, tiny bits and being able to control it, that's one. And then second part is for institutions coming on board because um, of the recursion uh, that Starnet enable that also lead, lead us to some of, for example, privacy um, that's being built into um, uh, the Starnet uh, ecosystem. And so we are able to have more control while having the uh, benefit of um, the scaling uh, cap uh, capability. All right. And so you're leveraging, for instance, uh, let's say shorter block time, shorter finality for more efficient liquidations yep. to increase, um, of course, like the, the ratios, the efficiency of capital in the market. And there's something curious that you described. So there is Artemis for retail, let's say, DeFi yep. users and Apollo for institutionals. Institutional money market means KYC. Yeah, yep. yeah, exactly. So what that is, it's for institutions, we actually would have um, two steps onboarding. So two steps onboarding meaning there will be a KYC process for the actual physical entity. When we mention institutions, we actually want to include a larger range uh, other than just, for example, crypto funds and things like that. So we actually do want to look into hedge funds, crypto native funds, as well as, for example, family offices or treasury of some of the SMEs or private companies where, for example, the business owner have a lot of um, crypto, crypto, crypto holdings and they are able to use that crypto holdings that are being stashed in a centralized exchange at the moment that's earning a very low yield. And they can use that and put it in a DeFi setting and be able to lend against or, or borrow against it at a much better rate. So that would be something that we're looking into. And the KYC component, one is off-chain, as I mentioned, and one is on-chain, meaning we want to um, partner with uh, other service provider to be able to track how the wallets behave, how the wallets have been, for example, paying any delinquency, things like that, and start to have a database of their behavior so that long term, uh, long term going forward, uh, we will be able to tap into um, even more uh, interesting use use case where we will be able to, for example, go for under collateralized lending or even uncollateralized lending per se. Yeah, from the moment there is this whole like uh, tr tr trust or that you're doing KYC and you're dealing with let's say trusted parties, you can explore venture into under collateralized lending. Obviously, sure. that's something yes, that's. Yes. Uh, that makes for most of uh, the traditional finance, I believe. Um, another question is, uh, what are the other components of the StarkNet stack mm -hmm. that you're exploiting? So you mentioned recursion, but are you also using multi-call for a uh, better yeah. user experience for it? Multi-call, uh, not especially at the moment, because um, I think that would be a lot more uh, applicable for, for example, for high frequency transactions. For, uh, and for us, um, letting pro pro protocol are not per se at the, the, the very high frequency and uh, high stake game at the, at the current juncture. But um, I would say for StartNet, other than um, uh, the, the benefit that we mentioned, um, actually for example, when we mentioned, um, let's say Origin, for example, I think the innovations in terms of how to incor incorporate, um, bring clients on board and then being able to use us as one of their backings for, um, let's say, you, uh, you account. I think these are some of the, the tech stack we can actually um, uh, try to integrate and have the, the, the social um, recovery aspect uh, into it so that it makes the whole um, experience of, for, let's say, coming from uh, a traditional finance setting and then going into a DeFi setting, it's not as scary and then a lot more uh, intuitive. And so what should we expect to 
use this platform concretely? Sure. Actually, our testnet is live uh, at the moment. We are opening it for uh, a limited um, community because we actually we do want to have a very high touch uh, feedback process with them. And uh, the testnet will roll out for two months, yeah. and then we will start to um, turn the iterations um, and also have that audit around late August time. And so the main net is targeting to be around September or early October. So it's going to be within the the, part, uh, the, uh, the later part of this year when we will have the main nets for Artemis coming. And Apollo, it's going to be about three to six months after that. All right. And so there's a way to get involved through the test net, even though it's uh, there is a limited amount of right, participants right. that can get involved. Uh, are you also open to like do you have open positions in the company? Are you recruiting? Uh, uh, we are, yes, we're currently recruiting. And for your first question, we already have um, the list of whitelisted um, testers to come in. But of course, uh, as we go further, when we have further iterations, we we actually do want to expand this number forward. So one way to um, uh, help us is basically be be active in our Discord uh, community and to provide us feedback in any capacity possible. And then we would, um, through uh, Learn and Earn, the quest that we have right now, try to select more users to come on board because we actually do want them to have a little bit of background information, background understanding of the protocol before bringing them on board and be able to provide helpful feedback. That's one. And then for two, I think, um, I mean, going, uh, going forward for Getting more information about us, Twitter would be a very good um, uh, channel for uh, I mean to to follow, and um, yeah, we're happy for, to uh, engage in any any capacity, and um, look forward to uh, working with all the other partners. And we just want to support in um, any innovations that can be built on top of us to make our protocol um, uh, even more dynamic, and uh, we can support more features later on. All right. And as usual, guys, if you want to explore the stack, like the ZKNN website and all the relevant resources, I usually leave them in the description down the video that you're seeing. And feel free to ask questions in the comment section once you're uh, stumbling on the YouTube version of this show. Brian, thank you very much for being among us and uh, I'll see you soon. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.